This is Tonight Alive. Over the course of three albums and countless shows, the Australian band has attracted a worldwide following. Now, on the verge of releasing album number four, it's safe to say the world is at their feet. This is Jenna. You may know her as the vocalist from Tonight Alive. You're about to know her for even more. Here is Jenna's Guide to Life. It'd be cool to go right back to, to the genesis of it. I mean, when did this album start taking place? I mean, what were the, like, let's be corporate about it. What boxes mm. did you want this album to tick when you were in those kind of war room talks? Oh, wow. That's a really cool question. Well, it started in the shed at my house. Right. The shed is like a room that's kind of like it would be a guest house or something like that. It, my house is super old and it was originally like a tool shed. And my mm. dad converted it into like a studio space when I was learning how to play instruments when I was a teenager. Yeah. So Wack and I basically moved into that space and started writing in January and it was hot like Australian summer with cicadas and it was a sweat box, there's no air conditioning. And that's the kind of like the, the setting and I guess the conversations were that we wanted to feel free on this record and we wanted to make our fans really happy mm. and we wanted to make ourselves really happy and we knew that that was going to take an unshackling. And, um, that was a real process for us because the Limitless Era was, um, even though I talk about empowerment and liberation and higher consciousness and freedom, the first song is to be free. I just want to run away and learn to be free. Mm. And even though I'm talking about all those themes, um, it was it was a kind of a rebuttal to what was actually happening in my life at the right. time and our lives as a band. So you, you're in a shed and a sweaty, hot shed in Australian summer and you've got this, the idea to create the album that makes you happy and to make your fans happy. I mean, what does that look like? The curse can, I mean, choice can be a curse. Right. You know, is it, is it this feeling of like, oh my God, I'm, I'm free, I feel liberated, I can do this. Or is it this moment of like, oh crap, how do we do this? Um, Underworld is talking about going to the dark place, going to your shadow self mm. and looking at that person and that version of yourself that was neglected or abandoned or traumatized. And, um, all those things kind of went hand in hand to make a, a rock record, which I love. It feels like it all, like, like kind of picking up your energy on it. Mm. Like, this all kind of just, it was so organic. Like this thing just kind of poured out of you guys. Was that yeah. how it went? Was it, was it one of your easiest albums to write so far? Yes, it right. was. Doing Underworld was a three month period of time. It was January to March. In Temple, like you, mm. you kick it off. You say the word depression. I know. Like that's a that's a statement. It fully that, is. That's like you. That word is then stuck in your head for the rest of that song as a listener. So, so you, even though you were going into these really deep and really hectic topics, was it still easy to address them and let them out? It was completely liberating. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So this was just a whole positive experience it was for, for me. Right. Yeah. It was for me. It was for Wack. It was for Maddie. For Jake. For Cameron. Like it was just for us. And yeah, just it was a really nice, intimate experience sitting next to Wack in my backyard essentially and just pouring our hearts out and what I was talking about it always happens this way that what we write about I'm not really ready to face yet mm -hmm. and it's kind of the seed gets planted when we write the song so I have to look at it after the fact so it's not always the hardest thing to write the song it's it's hard listening back to it and going oh my god my my subconscious is crying out for help right mm -hmm. now looking for heaven is a song that I honestly feel like I channeled I don't think that they're my thoughts mm -hmm. I think they're the words of like an angel or something like that because it says wait don't rush all is beautiful and it says breathe be still all is perfect your needs they will be met mm. and stuff like that and it's like uh, who am I talking to because I think that message was for me right. but it's not from me it's right. from someone else so sometimes you write things and you're like okay I need to shut up and pay attention because like something's coming through me sometimes your subconscious is onto it Totally so 10, is. 10,000 times more powerful than the conscious mind. It would be, that's so cool what you just said. Well, I, I made it up, but like it seems right. It's a right. rad it's, quote. It's like, it is so, so insanely powerful. Like you can mm. drive you to do a really good things, really horrible things as humans. So was it, was it almost like, I don't want to say out of body experience because that's um, a bit on the nose, but was it almost kind of <laughs> like that? Was it almost like this, did you have this moment when you're listening back to this music and you know, have oh my, had that thought of just like, oh my God, my band's really great. Did you kind of have that moment when you were, when you were listening back to it? I don't know, things like that did happen a lot. There were these strange moments where the songs caught me off guard. And you thought, oh my God, my band's awesome. <laughs> sure, just to come back around to it. Yeah, just wrap it all up. I, I do think the songs are awesome and I think we recorded them awesome. I think, yeah, and what does that kind of mean? Maybe the, the band's, band's awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think it all adds up.